1939. Dark clouds gather over Poland. Everyone senses that a war with Germany is inevitable. Bielsko, a town located in southern Poland, guards the road and rail networks leading towards Krakow. It is here where the Polish command decides to build a strong line of defense, named Position Bielsko. Antoni Schilling, the commander of the Kraków army, allocates funds for the construction of as many as 64 reinforced concrete bunkers on the northern and western side of Bielsko. They were to be placed every 500 meters, which would create a dense line of defense for Polish standards. The first plans for the defense line of Bielsko were made in April 1939. However, the construction of the fortifications didn't start until July. It was entrusted to the 21st Mountain Infantry Division, which was part of the Bielsko Operational Group, which was part of the Kraków Army. They were assisted by the reservists of the 3rd and 4th Podhale Rifles Regiment and Polish civilians from Bielsko. The work was led by an officer of the 3rd Podhale Rifle Regiment, Captain Stanisław Krach. When it was realized that there was not enough time for the construction, it was decided to adapt the basements of the houses near the number 17, 18 and 19 bunkers to machine gun emplacements. Eventually, by the end of August, only 21 machine gun bunkers were raised, although there were also plans for anti-tank gun emplacements. Despite this, it was the second largest fortified position in Poland from the year 1939. The line went from the slopes of Szyndzielnia through Wapienica to Stare Bielsko and Trzylipki Hill. In total, it was about 10 kilometers long. In addition to bunkers, it also included trenches and wire entanglements. Bielsko bunkers didn't stand out from the other Polish fortifications from that period. Placed close to each other, they were to form a crossfire defense and to withstand a hit from a 155 mm round. Their interiors contained only one room with one or two firing positions for the Browning WZ-30, Polish version of Browning M1917. Five soldiers could defend themselves in such a bunker. Its equipment included, among others, a stove, a water tank, an ammunition box, engineer's equipment, hero sense lamps and candles. On September 1st, the position Bielsko was part of the defense line of Pszczyna Dziedzice Bielsko. As the commander of the platoon of the 3rd Podhale Rifle Regiment, stationed in Kamienica, before the outbreak of the war, I took part with my subunit in digging defense ditches stretching from the water dam in Wapienica to Stare Bielsko. We hastily set up minefields and cut trees to obtain a convenient field of fire against the advancing enemy, 2nd Lieutenant Stanisław Kornas. The Germans knew about the well-fortified positions of Bielsko, thanks to their compatriots living in the town. They decided to encircle the defense lines and attack Pszczyna and Dziedzice. The attack on the latter was repulsed by Poles with a successful counterattack. Pszczyna, however, was captured by the 5th Panzer Division on September 2nd. This forced the Poles to leave the position Bielsko, in order not to be encircled. The soldiers marched through the city at night, destroying the equipment they couldn't take with them. I talked about what happened in Bielsko back then in my other film, to which link you can find in the upper right corner of the screen. Here you can see some rare photos of Bielsko bunkers from 1939. In 1945, when fierce battle took place in the town, the Germans used shelters built a year earlier on the eastern side of the city to defend themselves. Buildings from 1939 were not used. Some bunkers, like number 19 and 20, were renovated and have information boards. Clips you can see in this video were recorded by me during the summer holidays in 2021. Most of the fortifications have survived to this day. Only bunker number 21 was completely destroyed in the 1960s 
during the expansion of industrial plants. Bunkers number 3 and 11 survived damaged, and number 4, 6 and 10 were converted into utility rooms. Thanks to the accounts of local residents, we now know where the observation bunker was to be built. And that's all I wanted to tell you about one of the largest lines of Polish fortifications, which has survived almost entirely to this day and is free to visit.